Well, I don't go to work. That's the whole key. I don't go to work. I go to the farm. That's probably the Eastern Shore thing. You know, it's no different than a waterman. He's not going to work. He's going crabbing. And I'm going farming. The joy is planting the seed, is preparing the grind, and seeing it all the way through. You take care of it the whole way because the crop's depending on it and you're depending on the crop. So it's a two-way street there. I'm not going to go work for somebody else. That's working. I'm farming. It's not, it's what you do. It's not work. It's what you do. It's who you are. It's your, it's in your blood. I'm Charles Wright IV. I'm fourth generation farmer. I'm president of Cornerstone Farms, Wright's Market. We farm about 650 acres. We grow a little bit of green, process some vegetables, and then we grow vegetables for our retail market. In the retail market, we sell everything from fresh vegetables to we have a bakery, ice cream, giftware, and Amish outdoor furniture. And we also do ag entertainment in the fall where we have school trips and corn maize and all those type of things. The way I got started was years ago, almost before my time, if the wholesale market got flooded, they would just take the pickup and come to Route 50. You just park the truck on Route 50 and you'd sell the extra. And they were, they always called, just take it to the road. You know, if we got a little something, there was more than we had. And then in the uh, late seventies, my grandfather decided he'd start with a produce market, consisted of one flat wagon and a chair from my grandmother. The next year he got an umbrella. And since then it's been expanding. Vegetables are meant to grow on sand. They're not meant to grow in clay. And I believe it's the, the temperate climate, the soil type, it's, it's got to be in the soil type for to give that that flavor and that the crisp part. I think most of it's in our soil type for the flavor. The Eastern Shore, I mean, it's God's country because it's home, number one. I mean, my family settled here in the 1700s. So my roots are deep. You know, the farmers are, we're the stewards of the soil. We, we make a living. I'm the fourth generation. My son's going to be the fifth. In this business, if you don't take care of your land, your land is your income, your livelihood, it doesn't carry on to the next generation. So if my my forefathers starting here in the 1700s, apparently we've done a pretty good job of taking care of our land and taking care of our families without somebody telling me how to do it. And that's that's the one thing on the, uh, especially the lower eastern shore, we don't like people tell us what to do. We're not water dying, that's what I tell them. We're not water dying. You know, people say, you got a strong accent. What do you think you got? You know, it's no, uh, you think that's normal? No, that's from your region. Mine's probably stronger than, because I don't notice it until I listen to this. It's like, holy crap, man. He's rah, 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 rah. <laughs> but that's just how it talks. So that's how it is. I don't really care. See, my wife, and she's Michelle's from Delmar. And their accent, they talk fast. So now I've got a son that talks fast with an accent. With me, you know, my mind's drawn out. But he, he can get talking... I call it Delmar talk. People from Delaware, they say, we'll get up and dine with you. What the hell are you going to get up and dine with? What the hell does that mean? A friend used to be a chemical salesman, and he grew up, I mean, right down the road here. And he told my mom, he was, she was in here or something, and Ronnie said, he said, I'll get up and dine with you, Mr. Wright. She said, Ronnie, you've been in Delaware too long. That's a Delaware saying, not a, Mar not a Wacomico or a Maryland saying. Because I grew up with a mother, was an English teacher for 15 years. I mean, you spoke the king's language properly now it might have been with accent but she had your grammar as correct as she could get it on us customers in here you know from baltimore there's no doubt they're from baltimore i want them to take away knowing that by them stopping and and buying stuff from a local from a farmer you know they're they're not only supporting my family but they're supporting the agriculture community and by the by the customer buying local they help keep the ag community strong and if ag stays strong we stay rural and that's what I, I want it to stay rural.